I'm Keeper Paul and in a moment's time you'll meet other keepers along with our amazing seals. Before this takes place though, I'm sure our wonderful guest experience team led by Dave has just given you instructions about where you're seated. Presents one of the most recognised types of seals on earth. This type of seal lives in the Northern Hemisphere. They're not native to our shores, but we like to present them because they are the seal living closest to humans. Unfortunately, from time to time, that does mean that we impact on their world. His name is Pepper. Now, Pepper was born in the Rotterdam Zoo in the Netherlands. When he came to Australia five years ago, he was put under the care of his trainer, Angela. And as you can see, they've got a great relationship. How about a big, loud, warm welcome for them both. Does that sound familiar? A lot of people try to make that sound when they try to be a seal themselves, but it's only Californian sea lions that have that loud type of voice. Now, believe it or not, you and I and Angela all have something in common with Pepper. Have a look at your hand. <laughs> Pepper was having a really close look there, but he's supposed to do this and show you his flipper because underneath the skin of his flipper is exactly the same bone structure that we have in our hands, allowing seals like Pepper to get around in the water really quite well. Now it's in the water where they have to get away from predators and one of their most dangerous predators is what, kids? Isn't that a cool shark? In thick fur coats and blubber to keep them warm in the water, but there are times when they may start to overheat. So to cool themselves down, they'll put a hairless part of the body above the water, which in their case, of course, is the flipper. And that allows the heat to escape through there. Their flippers are great for propelling themselves through the water. Listen carefully. You may have heard Pepper taking a quick breath of air there. That's a natural behavior. It's known as porpoising. An energy efficient method for seals, wow. dolphins, penguins, and other air breathing marine animals just like whales to travel long distances in an energy efficient method means that they don't have to stop to take a breath. You're on land? Yeah, sure, thanks for that of course. On land their flippers are great for getting seals around or showing just how strong they are. Can see just how much strength he has in his front flippers that's how they can swim really quickly the seals that you're meeting here at Toronto Zoo are what are known as eared seals you can see their ears really quite well and as you noticed just then Peppy used all four flippers to climb to the top of the cliff on land most eared seals like sea lions and fur seals would be able to outrun us I think Pep's done really well today. Let's get one more look at him, everyone. That's Pepper. Thanks, Anne. This next seal is another Californian sea lion. He's actually our oldest seal at Taronga Zoo at almost 18 years of age. Born at SeaWorld on the Gold Coast, his name is Murphy. Why don't we get a really good look at him as he comes on out? I think he just turned back, actually. He's on his way down. Now, Murphy is actually going to meet one of our students. And her name is Hannah, waiting patiently. <laughs> Here he comes. He's a little bit bigger than Pepper. Everyone, how about a big high for Murphy and his trainer, Jacob? Well, Hannah, you know the routine. What we want you to do is to step in and step on that red spot and face the audience. Now, when you're right, what we want you to do is give Murphy a cue to have a look at his flipper, tap him on the top of the flipper. There you are, and hold it. Now, just like us, seals can get calluses on their feet by walking in sharp places like rocks. That looked all clear though, didn't it, Hannah? All right, good. The next step is to ensure that Murphy's comfortable with being touched. Lean in and touch him there on the chest. Yeah, you can build a rapport yourselves. Working with our seals is really important to build a relationship built on trust. <laughs> you got a spray there of some fish guts. So you can step over toward me, Hannah. Socially distanced, that's great. And what did Murphy feel like? Wet. Wet. <laughs> well, that was the right part of the script. That was really good, Hannah. But he's got one more job, and everyone, you can help us out. How about a big wave goodbye to Murphy? Thanks, Murph. Thanks for your help, Hannah. And we'll let Murphy go. Here's one of them. He was born three years ago on this day. Today is his birthday. How about a big welcome for Murphy, everyone? Thanks. 
when Moby was weaned, he was put under the care of his trainers, Ree on stage and Angela at the front. Again, you'll see us building a strong rapport or relationship with the animal. Now, Angela has a particularly strong relationship with Moby. Part of building a rapport is actually simply just having a bit of fun with the seal. Now, one day during her lunchtime, Ange and Moby were playing chasings down the front. You saw Peppa earlier porpoising for Angela. So this is how Angela and other trainers get this behavior started. Simply by having a bit of fun together at the front and then playing chasings. Now you may have heard a whistle just blown. What Angela is looking for is while Moby's chasing her, for him to break the surface. This is what we call capturing behavior. Just like that. So that's the start of porpoising. Each time he comes up to take a breath, but breaks the surface of the water, Angela blows the whistle. When the seals are initially in our care, we blow a whistle and feed them a fish soon afterwards. They understand that the whistle, or the sound of the whistle, means that they've done something correctly. If we threw a fish at any time, we could confuse them by rewarding them for a behavior that we don't want to see. So, the com the communication between the trainer and the animal is really quite important. This is only the early stages. Now, by the way, I'll just describe Moby's appearance. At the moment, he looks like his mum. Female and juvenile Australian sea lions have that lovely coloration. But when he gets to about the age of five, he'll change shape and colour, and he'll get a lovely blonde mane on the top of his head as he also starts to darken. But right now, as he's up against the glass, imagine that you're swimming underneath Moby and looking up. When you see a marine creature in the wild with a light tummy and a dark back, they actually have a form of camouflage. Looking at him from underneath, the white with the lightness of the water above him. Yet, if you're a predator swimming above and looking down, a dark back when seen from above helps that animal to blend in with the darkness of the depths of the water below him. <laughs> He's only a youngster, of course three years of age, Sometimes the seals will try and extend their sessions that they have so much fun with. <laughs> That's simply just that case. So the trainers are pretty patient. <laughs> I mean, parents, you probably know the deal, really. If you're having fun with the kids, you know, who wants those games to stop? And that's simply just what's occurring right now. So when he turns up to... <laughs> So Hans is going to have to come around on stage to call him back out. He's done the good job, everyone. That's made for the animals is really quite important. But there's another item that's known as enrichment. We're going to give you an example of that right now. Now, sometimes before the zoo opens, we'll actually that's take our seals out for a walk. And we'll do that a bit later. But right now, I'd like to introduce you to Kiki. She's a little rescued New Zealand fur seal. And she is here with her trainer, Jacob. How about a big hype for the boat? Kiki was found in Sydney Harbour almost 10 years ago. We feel that she'd been stuck by a boat. She was swimming in confused circles. Now, I did say a lot of care goes into looking after these animals. Training them behaviours is one part in which we care for them. A simple behaviour like opening their mouth on cue is a part of what we call husbandry. Husbandry is where we train our animals to cooperate in their daily health care. What Jacob's looking for is to make sure that she is in good order, her teeth and her mouth, that is, but the next job is for her to leap up and hit a target that in a moment's time will lower above the pool. I'll get your assistance when we do that. Now Kiki is a New Zealand fur seal. The name's a bit misleading because they're also an Australian native species as well. And in Australia, they breed on the south coast of New South Wales, all the way down to... Kiki's going to be sent to the top of the cliff. When she gets there, I'm going to count to three and we want you all to yell as loudly as you can, jump Kiki. Ready? Okay. Thanks for that response. One, two, three. <laughs> well, that was a pretty good yell, but I think it may have to be a bit louder. She's got a couple of gulls around her, which are a bit of a distraction. Why don't we try that one more time? Ready? One, two, three. Now swimming quickly is one way to get away from a dangerous animal like a shark or a killer whale. But leaping out of the water and changing direction is another method that they use to confuse that potential predator. What those gulls don't realise 
is that seabirds are actually on the diet for fur seals, just like Kiki. She's done a really good job though, everyone. That's Kiki. <laughs> Thanks, Kiki, for his species. So this time, we're actually going to bring him for a walk. And this is what we call enrichment, changing the schedule. But you can help us out simply by staying nice and relaxed and seated, and please don't try and reach out and touch him. So, of course, he was found on Bondi Beach, therefore his name is Bondi. And as you can see, he's very comfortable and has a lot of trust in his keepers, Re and, and Jacob. And that's a big hello. See, it sounds a lot different, doesn't it, to the Californian sea lions that we've already met. So Bondi is coming for a walk with his trainers, and it's a great opportunity just to describe him. You'll notice that both Bondi and Kiki look a little bit like shaggy dogs, a bit different to the sea lions. Sea lions have one layer of fur and a lot of muscle and bulk, which keeps them warm. Whereas fur seals, just like Bondi, actually have two layers of fur. As Ree's checking out his fur, oh, and that outer layer of fur is coarse to touch. And that's what protects him. Actually, if you're up nice and... <laughs> if you're up nice and close, you may get a strong whiff, a musty smell. Fur seals secrete an oil which protects their fur and it's also thought to be attractive to the females in that species as well. On his left hand side you'll see that big scar and that's where he came to us with that damage unfortunately. Bondi as a fur seal and sea lions have a pelvis that's down around where my shins would be and they fold that pelvis forward giving them an extra couple of legs at the back. We often get asked the question, what's the difference between a seal and a sea lion? Well, they're all seals, but sea lions and fur seals are eared seals. You can see the ears on the side of their head really quite well, and they fold their pelvis forward, getting around on land quite well. There's other types of seals, like true seals. Now that family of seal would find walrus. They belong to the family all by themselves. Those big animals from the Northern Hemisphere that are pink in color with those big long tusks. Now when Bondi opened his mouth a moment ago, you may have seen that his teeth were dark. Well that's not a sign of ill health. They don't have the enamel that we do that keeps our teeth nice and white. As they get older, their teeth darken with the natural bacteria which is thought to protect their teeth out there in the salt water. You'll also notice that as Reed had stationed or targeted Bondi, he lifted his flippers. Uh, he lifted his whiskers, I beg your pardon. He also lifted his whiskers when he received a fish. On the end of every whisker is a fine nerve ending. And in the wild, by folding their whiskers forward, just like that, seals can actually detect the movement that is made by fish, allowing them to feed at night time and even in murky water. So whiskers aren't just... Well, thank you everyone for attending our show today. Thank you to our seals, to our keepers. Sections two and three, I'll get you to remain seated for the time being, but section channel.